This is the Novel Keys NK87 Aluminum Edition, and it is one of the more striking keyboards I own. It features a south-facing PCB, RGB, an aluminum case, silicone plate dampener, and a silicone case dampener. It doesn't come with keycaps or switches, but does come with a fantastic carry case. Overall, the quality of this keyboard is fantastic. Let's quickly talk about how this build came to be, some things to consider, how it sounds and feels, and then talk about what's coming next. I am not a fan of the Sangin bottom row and am also not a fan of tray mount design, but I feel that I can look past these opinions to say that this is a premium keyboard I am proud to own. The coating on this board is bright and very hard to showcase. It is a very striking color and this video may not do it justice. Natural light gives a better spectrum to work with, so at times I'll be trying to reflect natural light on it to capture what it really looks like. When I found out that the GMK Hammerhead set was available, I bought the dark set, an NK87, and a copper plate from Novel Keys, and then I bought some glorious pandas from Micro Center. With this build, I wanted a bright and colorful keyboard that caught my eye and had some compelling contrast. This build cost me $656 with shipping. Because it was so expensive, I wanted to compare it to a cheap version of the build. So I ended up buying the entry edition, a knockoff hammerhead dark set from Etsy, and some glorious branded Kale Pro Purples from Micro Center. The entry edition cost me $249 all said and done. Comparing these two turned out to be comparing apples to oranges as they had completely different sounds and feels. I did remove the tray mount standoffs on the entry edition so the PCB was more forgiving and muted from the silicone dampener. I did like how the entry edition turned out but if you'd like to see why I chose not to keep it out on my desk please check out the video linked above. One option that I thought was rather unique was the copper plate add-on. Most places will have a brass or polycarbonate plate but you should know that copper can become tarnished a little with time, so just keep that in mind if you are swapping out the aluminum plate for one of the other plates. I did take a chance with the color combination on this keyboard, and was very happy to see that the light green and blue of the keyboard versus the keycaps didn't clash at all and complemented each other. The copper plate and the orange stems of the switch housings also looked very great in contrast to the bright yet pastel color of the case and keycaps. Of course, the Sangin layout did limit which keycaps I could put on this keyboard, and I would have liked to see how some of my other key sets looked. Because I didn't want to reopen the keyboard, I went ahead and lubed the stabilizers before the original sound test. After I recorded some sounds, I lubed all of the glorious panda switches and was very happy with how smooth the keys felt. The tray mount of this board doesn't allow for any flex whatsoever, so if you want a soft feel to your keyboard, this is most definitely not the board for you. If you are going to be typing tens of thousands of words constantly, I would suggest going with the entry edition or something that had a true gasket mount. Looping the switches did remove the small amount of ping, made it sound just a tad creamy, and also made the already smooth pandas even more smooth. It sounds really clacky and crisp, in a few seconds, I'll give you a sound test of the keyboard. Custom keyboards are a hobby of mine, and I am always searching for unique builds that allow me to change my typing experience drastically. From soft and subtle to functional or beautiful, I swap these keyboards out daily to enjoy the unique characteristics each board has to offer. For me, typing isn't just something that gets the job done. Just like an instrument, it is an artistic outlet that lets me enjoy every key press. I invite you to join my community, experience and share something new, and help me to make more content.
Next, I'll be building the DZ65 with a walnut case and matching wrist rest. After that, I'll probably be building the Flea Sports MK870. The MK870 has many features similar to the Entry Edition, except that it was only $60. Hit that subscribe button and stay tuned. Let me know down below what else you'd like to see. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for your help. Okay, sorry. Oh, you all done? All done? Okay.